from your heart. Tell him for real. the lottery but I have uh, an obsessive behavior and I wanted to play the lottery but I know I'm so obsessive if I started I would just keep playing and playing and playing and I would never give any money to the church because it would all be in you know 7-eleven so I decided that I wouldn't play the lottery but I loved going to Las Vegas and so I would go to Las Vegas and I would put all my money in there and I would lose it and I wouldn't get to go often but I look forward you know I would collect quarters for the next time that I was gonna go and I went two years ago to a conference that was in Las Vegas, and I was ready. I had my quarters ready because it was my money, and I could do what it, what, with it what I wanted to. And so we were walking through the c casino to go to register for the conference, and then I was coming back to spend all my money. And I walked through, and my friend said, who would want to waste God's money? And so I didn't say anything. It's like, oh, my goodness. And so we went and registered, and we walked back through the casino because, you know, I was saying, you know, I'm just going to lose her, you know, and then I'll just gamble it. <laughs> and so when we walked back the second time, she said, who would want to throw away God's money? <laughs> I was convicted. God gives us resources to use in church. Yes, you have rights and you have privileges and you have freedoms, but that's not my money. It's not my money. It didn't belong to me. God gave it to me to use for his body, for the body of Christ and for his world so people would be draw, drawn unto him. And so I went back to the room and I was so convicted by that, I thought, you know, I teach the Bible. She's in my class. Can I gamble and let her see me throw away God's money? So, you know, I didn't gamble that day. And Lloyd called me that night. He said, well, did you, did you gamble? I said, no. He said, you didn't? <laughs> I said, no, I was too busy. He called me the next day. Well, did you gamble today? No. You didn't? No, I was real busy. I was like, you're busy? You've never been busy before. And I went all the three days, and I didn't do it because I was convicted that God gave me resources to serve him and to use wisely. And then I got an opportunity to go to, to Las Vegas 
this year, and I thought, I'm going to see if God healed me. He healed me, you all. He'll heal you. He'll make you die to whatever rights and privileges you have so that you will serve him and that your life will be a witness for him. And then people will look and see him provide through you, and you become a conduit. But first, you have to die to yourself and give up what you call your rights and your freedoms so others may have and others may come to the Lord. So I want to challenge you this morning. What about you this morning? What can you give up in your life so other people can be helped? Last Thanksgiving, I like to run the turkey trot. And the reason I like to run the turkey trot is, you know, I, I have a love-hate relationship with running because the first mile I hate running. It's like, ugh, I'm only running one mile. This is horrible. You know, nobody ever know, okay, that I, only, that I cheated and that I didn't run three. And so when you get to the second mile, you start to feel better, okay? So I thought, well, I'll run on Thanksgiving Day because Thanksgiving is an eat holiday. There's, there's nothing you do. You thank God, and then you eat all day long. So at least I could run, and then I won't feel bad about eating up all the turkey and dressing. And so I had, to, uh, I had to go somewhere and take a strawberry cake, and I love baking cakes. And so I, I looked at my, my cabinet, and I was missing my mixer. So I said, oh, you know, Walmart is open. And I asked my husband, you know, I said, Lloyd, I don't know what happened to the mixer. And, you know, i got to make the strawberry cake. Will you go to Walmart and buy me a mixer? So, you know, he's, you know, he's married to this crazy woman who never has what she needs at the last minute and has to make seven trips. So he, in his grace, he went to get the mixer. So I'm at home, and I'm getting my strawberry cake ready. I have the confectionate sugar, the strawberries, and I get everything out because it's going to be a good cake. And then my husband, he, I can hear the garage door opening. And he, and he runs in like Superman, and he brings me this. <laughs> and I say... Lloyd, what is that? <laughs> he said, well, you, he starts explaining because he can tell my face didn't look real happy. He said, it's a mixer. This is a mixer. I said, Lloyd, he said, Michelle, that was all they had. I said, in the whole Walmart? This is all they <laughs> Well, you know, I have to make the cake. So, you know, I got to do what I have to do. And, and it, if you notice, there's not a plug on here. This is a charger. And you know it's been in the box, so you know it's not charged. So I had to like plug it in for five minutes and then mix the cake for one minute, then plug it in for five minutes, mix the cake for one minute, plug it in. And so I'm making this cake, making this cake, and, and I finally get the cake made. You see, the charger isn't consistent power. This thing doesn't have consistent power in and by itself. And so it runs out. You know, I could mix for a little while, but then the power run out. Then I'd have to go, 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 and get, because it's not authentic power. And so a couple of days later, he came in. He said, Michelle, I went to Costco's, and I got you another mixer. And the difference between this mixer is it, it doesn't have the charger. It has an adapter that's automatically in it. It's already in it. When you accept Jesus Christ as Savior, the power is automatically put in you. You don't have to plug, you know, it's just, you just turn it on. Once it's plugged, once you're plugged into the power source, you don't have to worry about that. So this world that has this big old matrix system that we get stuck in, we have the power of the Holy Spirit to do great works if we'll work in our spiritual gift. And we don't have to worry about losing the power. You can't lose the power. You, can't, you cannot use the power, but you can't lose the power. It's more power than you can even imagine because it's God's power. And we can have that same power to rescue those who are stuck between a rock and a hard place.